Hello, Vinyl Community. Class is back in session. Classical uh, music for the Vinyl Community 102. Um, this class, um, actually, this video is just going to be a an answer, a long answer to a question that has come to me on several occasions since my introduction in, to the Vinyl Community. And that question is, Blake, I'm often out and about, and I see groups of classical records. Um, what labels should I look for? Are there any particular labels that are worth picking up above uh, other labels um, when I'm when I'm offered the opportunity? And the the answer is, uh, you know, there there is a yes and no answer there. Yes, there there are some labels that are definitely worth picking up, no matter what uh, music is on it. Uh, and then there's some other labels that are you know, iffy, and um, what I'll do in this, this video is I've, I've gathered uh, quite a stack of labels that I normally run across in America um, and in American collections. Uh, mostly they are domestic labels. There are some imports, but they're the type of imports you see often enough that, that it would be good to, to be aware of. Um, so I'll go through these and um, I, I don't have that well. I, ha I have a few uh, foreign labels, uh, especially in the European countries. Uh, I won't include those here for the most part, not unless they're, they're common enough that, that you would see them in America. Um, that'll be another video. And uh, for um, others out there who, who have labels that you want to show, uh, please do. I, I love labels. And um, one, of the, one of the big enjoyments of classical uh, record collecting is that there there are so many labels from around the world that that are pretty cool um, and their histories are, are often very long and uh, intertwined um, as as you will learn as you uh, pick up classical music uh, in your own collection. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll run through uh, just I'm, I'm just going to show a bunch of labels, not particularly the records themselves. However, you will see them. I'm not going to talk about them. I just want to focus on the labels right now. That way, um, when you're out, you can say uh, or think, "Oh, yeah, Blake said that was a pretty good label to pick up. I'll uh, I'll consider that." Um, so I'll do that, and I've got this divided into two two different stacks. Um, the first stack uh, are labels that I generally will pick up n no matter what. They're they're like the the better labels to have, and that's probably what the questions were really asking about. The second stack are labels that you see a lot uh, in American shops and collections, um, and and they're good labels. It's just that if I'm given an opportunity, say I have 50 bucks, or you know there are 100 records there, and I can only bring home 50, I'm going to pull from the first stack of labels first, unless it's something really, really unique music-wise uh, on, on the second set of labels that I'll show you. So I'm going to jump right into this, and it's probably going to be a whirlwind, but again, the focus of this video is just for the labels themselves. Um, and uh, I think I've got these alphabetical. Um, I don't know if that helps or hurts, but, but maybe, it'll, maybe it'll help. And some examples uh, are some labels I've got several examples of, two or more examples, because in time the, um, the label look um, has changed enough that it's worth it's worth looking at seeing different things. Uh, so, in the uh, the stack of labels that I will always slow down and look very very closely at, um, we'll start with the A's, and that's Angel. The Angel uh, label was in the EMI label, um, basically in the American counterpart of the EMI label. The EMI released a lot of their material on the Angel label. And that's this label right here. As you can see, it is, uh, wow, this is terrible. It is in a little angel that's scribing a, a groove into a record. So uh, that's a really good label to pick up. And often there'll, there'll be a somewhat plain uh, kind of border here uh, for the spine with, with the name very clearly marked on the side. Uh, very good label to pick up. I'm always stopping for Angel Records. Um, Here's another, um, a later uh, angel record um, with the this kind of uh, 
logo or, or notation on, on the top and uh, that kind of uh, logo for the angel label. Now this is a very beautiful record. Um, yeah. So, oh, and then, and this has got a plain back. Very, very deluxe kind of um, release here in the U.S. Um, then uh, Archive. Archive is a is a German um, kind of a German company or label, but you see them enough in America that uh, that you definitely worth picking up. I, I honestly believe I think there's some connection between archive and Dutch gramophone. The quality is uh, about exactly the same. Uh, they even look and feel the same. So I don't know if it's uh, an offshoot of Dutch gramophone or not. And uh, here's another archive. Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious here um, that it's archive and right here. So yeah, archive is a very good one to pick up. Argo, um, you see this? I mean, th this is definitely a European uh, import. This actually this came from um, England, uh, associated with Decca. And um, but but I, I do see them enough that I thought it was worth showing you what an Argo label looked like. Uh, again, I always pick Argo up when I when I see them. Columbia, you see a lot of Colombian classical and uh, various formats or various forms of, of the label. This is an earlier one that's kind of like the 6i uh, sound. Uh, Columbia Masterworks, uh, definitely uh, a label to pick up anytime, uh, anytime you get a chance to, to add Columbia, do so. Uh, Here's another form of the label, Columbia Masterworks label, very good to have. And then you'll see a lot of this too. This was getting into the later uh, 60s, 70s kind of stuff. Um, Columbia is good uh, for the most part. They're good. Sometimes you get some some that are not great, but they're definitely worth uh, worth picking up when you when you're given the opportunity. Decca. Um, Decca, for the most part, is a uh, a European label um, released here as London, for the most part, and I'll get into some London. But you do see Decca enough here in the United States that it's worth it's worth uh, noting the label there. Um, this is an older one, but uh, definitely, if you see Decca, pick them up. Uh, Spanish music. That's pretty good. Pretty good record there. Uh, oh yeah. So. An import that you see a lot of, and um, fortunately for us collectors, there's enough Deutsche Gramophone that that a lot of dealers just don't uh, they don't view them as valuable because they always see them. A lot of Deutsche Gramophone uh, has made it to the United States. Definitely worth picking up. Their quality uh, from from Germany, of course, their quality has is always top notch. Uh, their vinyl. Um, for the most part, through all of their periods, um, is is very very desirable in, in terms of quality and and uh, quality. Uh, so I've got several Deutsche Gramophones, but this is pretty common uh, thing to see: big yellow bar on the top and lots of good uh, liner notes on the back. Very 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 nice label. Always pick up Deutsche Gramophone if you can. Um, here's an earlier, very, um, it's kind of like a cardboard uh, sleeve here, uh, more more of a board than a cardboard, uh, Dutch gramophone. Uh, I, you can't go wrong with Dutch gramophone. EMI, um, you don't see a lot of EMI in the United States unless you come across a nice collection of classical. Always, always pick up EMI um, label for your for your collection when when you get an opportunity to. Um, again, very desirable and and often very collectible. There are a lot of uh, series in the e, on the EMI label that uh, classical collectors will pay big big bucks for. Um, 
Erato, um, you don't see a lot of these in the Amer in the United States, um, but I'm pointing this out because there's another label coming up in my second stack uh, that uses uh, a lot of Erato uh, recordings as their source material. Good label to pick up. Uh, hung hung Hungaraton. Hungaraton. Hungarian label. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, you see them enough that it's worth uh, picking up when, when you get a chance. If you see this, just, just pick them up. You won't go wrong. London. Lots of lots of incarnations of the London label. I'm going to show several of them. The London um, FFRR label is a very, uh, a very popular one. Um, they were the uh, the United States or the American DECA uh, company. FFRR full frequency range recording. Uh, you pick up pick up London's. Here's another London uh, label. And definitely, if you see these, uh, you know, Stereophonic London's, um, don't hesitate. Pick them up. Uh, especially if they have a blue back, don't hesitate. There's a there's a big demand in the classical world for these things. Um, are they better? No, I haven't found that they're better. But people, they're you know collectors. Uh, they will pay extra for blue backs. Mercury, oh yeah, Mercury live in presence. One of uh, one of Americans' finest. Um, Always pick up Mercury, especially when they're in good shape. Uh, they uh, they had uh, kind of like a subtitle, "Living Presence." Uh, you can't go wrong there. Very very good very good material, Mercury. Phillips. Don't hesitate. Pick up Phillips. Phillips is good. RCA. Now RCA is a tough one because. They've been around for so long and they've done so much stuff. The safe thing to do is to pick them up. Um, especially, you know, Living Stereo is a pretty popular thing to pick up. Um, Red Seal stuff, and here's kind of a, a later, I think this was Dyna Groove. Um, a mistake on their part, but still worth, still worth picking up. Uh, nice Julian Bream there, Derek. Uh, oh, yeah. Now here's a later. RCA label and getting more into what what you're normally used to seeing. Um, this is price. Let's see, nothing interesting on the back. Uh, and a final RCA uh, label. Still not 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 much to show on the back. But a lot of the RCAs you're looking for are the sh or the dogs. Um, they're different versions of the the dog, and uh, we'll get into that in another video. We'll dig into some detail on some of these labels. Kind of like the Hungaraton or whatever that label is from Hungary. There's a Czech label, uh, Superafon. Um, not very common, but common enough that you should probably know about the label. If you see them, pick them up. Don't hesitate. Um, Another one. Uh, Telefunken. Uh, this is going to be hard. I always pick these up. Uh, very good quality material. And I absolutely love the label. I wasn't going to show many labels, but i got to show you this label. Love this. Set this aside. Um, a few more, and then we'll get into the second stack. Uh, Vanguard. Um, Vanguard's pretty good. Uh, they also have an Everyman series. I think it's a, le a kind of a, a a lower price label. But but I'm I'm always stopping at uh, on Vanguard and West Westminster. It's another good label, especially their older stuff. Um, that's one version of the label, and well, that helps. I 
All right, second stack. Um, so these are these are by no means trash. Uh, I'll make that clear. Uh, these are just ones that that I won't I won't just pick up because they're there. I, I there, there needs to be a, a more reason. Um, capital for for Columbia uh, for classical capital is is okay. Um, uh, it's you know you know how it is. Candide, uh, decent decent stuff. Uh, again, they were kind of a budget label. If it's material that I like, I'll pick it up. All right, now you'll see these all the time, and you can often get them for nothing. Musical Heritage Society. Now, why do I have them in the second stack? It's not uh, it's not that they're bad. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of Musical Her Heritage Society releases are um, sourced from uh, West uh, Western European countries, uh, Czech. Hungary, uh, some Soviets, some Russian stuff, um, West Germany. They, um, geez, it's hard to describe them. Quality's great. The uh, the pressings are great. Um, they're just everywhere. Uh, but one one thing about Musical Heritage Society, uh, they they they're very plain. I mean, they're, they're plain. They they don't they don't do anything to to help you buy them. Uh, they they specialized in a lot of um, very early music uh, up to Renaissance and some Baroque stuff, and they also did a lot of stuff with period instruments. Now, if you like that kind of material, keep your keep your eye out on Musical Heritage Society stuff. Uh, you can often get them very cheap, and uh, it's not a bad label. It's just sometimes you can find so many of them that that you get kind of discouraged just by uh, the the demand or the quantity available. None such. Now, none such is another one of those labels where, for just straight class, straight up classical music, they're they're okay. Uh, but you can often get, um, as you've seen before, like in uh, Chris Astor Traveler '68s material. A lot of uh, world kind of music. Here's China, Chinese traditional stuff. Uh, again, on the there's the Explorer series of none such. Uh, good, good for stuff like that. And uh, this actually happens to be a good one on none such 20th century music. Um, good label, just you know. I don't, I don't know why I feel like I'm apologizing, but but I am. Seraphim, they're uh, are offshoot of the Angel label. Um, you can recognize, you know, there's some semblance of the Angel there uh, in a little Seraph. Uh, they're they're kind of lower line release. Generally, they're re-releases of Angel material from years past. So it's a good way to pick up older material when you can't find the originals. Um, kind of like a reissue label. But they did do some stuff um, of their own. Uh, you know, Seraphim. The Vox label, or in this case, the Turnabout label, their, their Turnabout um, label, kind of, a, again, another bargain or, or value release. Uh, now RCA had a had a label line they called their uh, Victrola line, lower you know kind of a value type thing. Same thing with uh, the uh, Seraphim labels that they're re generally re-releases of older material, but it's good stuff. Um, if I can find uh, regular R straight up RCA stuff, I'll pick it up. But sometimes the Victrola stuff is 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 desirable. I mean it's equally as good. Uh, just happens to be a lot out. And the last one I have for this video uh, is the true Vox label, not the turnabout, but the Vox. Or stereo Vox, as they say in here. But again, uh, a good label, but uh, not, you know, not top tier, but definitely worth picking up. Now, that's it for this uh, 
run through labels. I hope that wasn't bad or terrible. Um, was really intending to try to get you familiar with a bunch of labels that are worth picking up and some that are that are that you see often um, that that would be considered now. There are certainly other labels, domestic labels, especially a lot of private press labels that I didn't show. Um, maybe maybe I can do uh, another video down the line on that kind of stuff too. So there you have it. Um, end of uh, class 102. That was just a run through of uh, mostly labels that you find in in American collections, and uh, I hope that's been helpful. Um, I know. Uh, it's quite a lot to, to throw at you, but uh, you've <laughs> you, you've learned to ex uh, expect that with some of these videos. So, um, if you have any questions, please uh, ask them in the comments section. Post your comments. Send me a private message, and uh, if you want me to go somewhere or into detail with any of these labels, let me know because uh, I'd love to pull them out and, and show them to you. Uh, I'm probably going to do that with some of these anyway because some of these labels are just awesome. So, all right, guys, we'll uh, we'll see you around next time. Thanks very much for watching, y'all. Appreciate you. Bye bye.